Hello, this video is the design criteria for a sport fishing boat to be used in Panama City, Panama as a fishing charter boat. In Panama City, the fishing starts at about 40 miles away from the city and it can extend uh, as, as far as you can go. And it is not uncommon for, for avid fishermen to do single day 200 mile round trip in, in the Gulf of Panama. So the boat needs to have uh, a good range, ideally around the 400 mile range, and it needs to be able to handle up to six foot seas comfortably. Um, the ideal speed, since the fisher grounds are, are a little far, would be a 35 knot cruise. Um, with with good consumption ideally around the 1.3 or 1.5 mile per gallon range uh onboard water could be around 50 gallons or so uh the construction material is thought to be in aluminum <clears throat> just because it's going to be used as a charter boat aluminum is is it's let's say a tougher material and better to for for charter so it's thought of as aluminum although it can be it can be, we can consider other options as well. And um, to start describing the boat, I'll start with, uh, with the motivation for the boat, where does it come from? Motivation for, for this boat or the, or the idea is born from the Contender 35 side console. This is a boat where I grew up fishing, where I learned to fish. And this is where I got a lot of the features and, in, and layout for the boat that I am wishing to design. Main features that I like about this boat is are the following. Number one, the captain is really close to the fishing cockpit. So, if uh, the captain is is in the in the pilot position and he needs to go back into the cockpit to help with fishing, it's really easy for them to do. <clears throat> the alternative, most commonly seen in other boats, is for the for the wheel to be up here, which makes it a, a little cumbersome for the captain to move to the fishing to the fishing area. The feature number two that about this layout that is very comfortable is a lot of seating and a lot of seating that is integrated and looking into each other. So, so no one is, is out of the party kind of, kind of phrase. So if the captain is here, they can see everyone, they can see out front and they are not giving their back to anyone, which also sometimes happen when the, when the, when the pilot position is over here, the captain, uh, Kind of goes into his own world and he's not able to interact with the rest of the crew as easily. Also this boat, even though it has a cabin, we often slept out here either in the in this cushion or in the floor just because it was it was comfortable. So I would like to be able to replicate as well. The only downside to this boat is that going to the bow is really hard. It's it's uncomfortable. It's hard to go to the bow with a rod in your hand and people have to pass it through the center. So one person moves up to the bow and then another person helps them by passing the rod through here. Also, if you hook up a fish on the, while on the bow, it's, it's you can fight the fish from there, but when you need to hook it up or you need to get it into the boat, it's also very difficult. Someone has to go out to the bow and help you with a, uh, with a long hook in order to grab the fish. So the alternative or the way to solve that problem, the main way to solve that problem, is either with a center console, uh, but a center console loses all this cabin space, or with a walk around. And here I have, have selected a, a walk around uh, to share. The walk arounds are really practical in that sense because it's really easy to go through the bow. However, this, this little uh, indentation here to, or the walk around itself removes a lot of cabin space. So, so we're gonna try to solve that too in the design that I am presenting today. Another disadvantage of um, of walkarounds is that the cabin is usually very very small or or not that wide. Let's see if I have another picture. Sorry, it was right there. So the cabin in these boats is usually not that wide and it feels cramped because, like I said before, the captain is in a very forward position. He has to go through this little hallway to move back, and it's not comfortable for fishing. Uh, so we would like to solve that too as well. Center consoles also have, let's say, uh, a narrow cabin, but we can, 
when you can leave the, the seating positions to the sides, as in a center console, then that solves uh, that solves that problem. It's in a center console, even if you're sitting here or here, since you can leave through the sides, it's very easy to go back into the fishing ground. So, with all those things in mind, um, we have come up with I have come up with this layout that is, and it explains the design intention for for the boat. The boat, uh, this particular sketch is for a catamaran. The boat does not necessarily have to be a catamaran, uh, but this one is thought out as a catamaran just to provide a softer ride. Um, and this boat is thought as to be built in aluminum, like I said before, but that can be reconsidered as well if we find that using fiberglass or something like that is, is cheaper or better in some way. So the general layout for this boat, like I said before, it's a combination of all those things I was saying that we like about the other boat. In here, in this area, which is the main, the main captain seat, it feels like a center console. The seat is 180 centimeters long and 50 centimeters deep. So during the day, three people can sit here and navigate comfortably under the, underneath the roof, which I have hidden, but the roof is, is there, so it provides a lot of shade for not only the captain, but also the people who are facing back and watching the, the fish. And this seat is also 180, 180 centimeters long, so that so one person can sleep here and one person can sleep here at night. And during the day, there's a lot of space. Everyone is underneath the shade. So when you're when you're fishing for, for 12 hours a day, you have a good place to hide from the sun and from the rain. The challenge with this kind of layout of combining uh, let's say the center console area with a more seating arrangement similar to the Contender 35 side console was the passage into this area. And this is where, and the solution for that, for that tighter space is in this smaller console. The intention for this smaller console is that you can fit uh, two screens, one on top of the other, one on top of the other one here. And then down here, you can have your wheel and all the controls that you need. And there's a way of making these look, uh, look, even though it's a small console, there's a way of making it look really cool. And uh, we can think of also maybe including all the electronics inside the console. So all the batteries can go in there. So everything that's related to electronics or switches or whatever will be in this very central and safe space around the boat. For the captain's seat, there's a raised flooring so that, so that he can easily look above everyone that might be standing here and easily look the bow of the boat while navigating. On the sides of the boat, like I was describing before this area, the intention is to make it really easy for you to move into the bow so that you can cast from the bow. And if you hook up a fish on the bow, you can walk back down easily because these steps are, are very big. The idea of the bow is that it is really flat so that it's easy to walk on and People can stand here and cast at the same time and fish from here at the same time comfortably without slipping or tripping simply because this area is, is very flat. The intention also is to have a guardrail on the side. So when the steps start to come up, the idea is that there will be a guardrail that comes up as well. I haven't drawn that just for simplicity. And uh, in general, the, the intention for that guardrail is to also have a similar, uh, let's say, I don't know what to call it. I don't know if it's aggressive or or a sleek look at, as the rest of the boat. So it can be tilted forward with the supports tilted forward to make it look very sleek and nice. Inside the boat, there's space for, so let me go over to this side. The intention here is that from the, from the protected area, you can go down into the hull on here. So, these seats would be, this would be a refrigerated seat or a big cooler seat. And this would be either a cooler seat or storage. And the reason I mentioned that is because even though this looks like a seat underneath, it is empty. So that when you go into the hall, there is space underneath this seat uh, for the toilet and underneath this steps for the toilet. Uh, the clearance there is less than two meters. But since you're going to be sitting down, uh, we're okay with having that smaller clearance. If other ideas come up on how to solve that, um, all the recommendations are welcome. So, like I was saying before, you can, sorry, you come down into the hall, and the toilet would be in this space right here, where where as you come down, you can you can stand here. But when you sit into the toilet, the clearance from here to here is about a meter sixty. So you just have to be a little careful, but that's fine. You're going to be sitting there and that's not going to be used that much. 
find their space down here for for a bed. I don't remember right now the width of the bed. Um, this was the maximum that I could fit is about a meter fifty, um, and that is fine. This, this bed allows uh, for for sleeping for four people. So one person can sleep here, one person can sleep here, one person can sleep here, and the fourth person can sleep here. So there's comfortable seating for uh, comfortable a uh, space to lie down for four people. Uh, if it's just for day travel, uh, where no one's going to be sleeping overnight, and there's space for for close to ten or eleven people. So there could be three people here, plus three here, that's six, plus three here, that's nine, and then two more here, or just one more here, whatever. It's it's ten or eleven people. So we would like to rate the boat for about that. Regarding performance, uh, ideally the boat would cruise uh, at 35 knots, which is around 40 miles. Um, ideal, ideally, I would like to be able to achieve that with two 300 outports. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that works out. Um, if not, we could go up to, to 350, uh, but I, I particularly like the 300, the 300 outports because they are they're lighter, uh, and both the Mercury's and the Yamaha's. They're very, they're very uh, good performing engines. I think that gives the whole idea for the boat regarding fit and finish. Um, I like the finish on this boat. This is a Woolridge boat. It's a new model. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, this is uh, it's called Woolridge boat. It's a relatively newer model for them. It's called their deep water series. And this boat has really good finishes. It's built in aluminum, like we described before. And I particularly like their front windshield. In the sketch, the front windshield is just depicted as a single piece of glass. It does not necessarily have to be the detail because you might need supports here and supports here for the, for the roof. But if we can imitate something similar to the wool ridge boat, that would be probably perfect. Let me see if I can jump over to the page again. Okay, so here it is. I like this front windscreen. And in general, the fit and finish in this boat is, is very nice. Something else that I liked about that boat is that uh, the space on the side of the boat, on the interior side of the boat, the gunwales, is open. And I think we might be able to achieve that with aluminum and have some trays here, which will serve as storage as is shown here. So just generally the fit and finish in this boat is really nice. Uh, and we would like to be, to be able to imitate something like that. Uh, I think that's the main idea behind the boat. I hope this video was helpful and um, I'm looking forward to hearing back from, from you. Thank you very much.